Welcome back to Market Connection. Today we set up car scanner for Android phones. So before we get to the setup car scanner, you're going to need to get an OBT2 sensor first. I have two here. This one's by BAFX Products, and it's great because it works with both iPhone and Android. But I also have one by VPeak. It's a much smaller unit, and it works for specifically Android or iPhone. Um, notice the big difference between the two is this one is much smaller. So your OBT2 port is located down below and to the left. And we get our big old BAF product, OBT2 scanner. You know, notice it hates to out quite a bit. So if you're driving, it's possible you can kick that custom damage to your car. So for our purposes, we're not going to want to use this guy. We want something nice, small, and compact. And that's where the VP comes in. You see, when we plug this guy in, it sits in there nice and out of the way. And from my position here, my foot is not going to basically hit against it and you know, cause damage accidentally. So now with our small compact OBT2 scanner installed, it's time to go and download the car scanner app. So the first things first, you need to go to your Google Play Store and you're gonna search for car scanner. And the first thing pop up should be the car scanner ELM OBD2 by OBZ. When you find that, click install. This is a free app, but they do have a pro version you can buy for two or three bucks, which I currently do have. So once we get into the app, we're gonna click connect. We're gonna allow permissions, hit next and allow. And now make sure we're connected by via Bluetooth and connection profile needs to be set to Ford Mach E slash F-150 Lightning. Hit okay. Then we're gonna click next. Now this should automatically connect your OBT2 sensor. If it does not, try pairing it with the code 1234. We check the car's notifications. Sure, so allow that. Alrighty, so let's go to our dashboard. And you can see here, car scan already set you up with 16 pages of just a buttload of great information. But I wanna make my own page, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and click the gear. And we're gonna click add page. Now we gotta find out what layout we want. I like this one right here, with like the eight in the top left. Now we need to pick our eight sensors. Well, first thing I wanna know is my battery's state of health. So let's go ahead and pick HVH, so we know how old our battery is. And we're gonna have this on text view. Now we want to have HV state of health. There it is at the bottom. And we want this one to be a view of a line. So now we know how, well, how healthy our battery is. Let's see how much power our battery is using. So let's go to EV charge power. Let's see if this tells how fast it's charging. We want gauge indicator three. And how much we're using is going to be under EV battery power. And here we want to have gauge indicator. And uh, how our temperature is doing. So let's, look, let's get some outside temperatures. Under text. And now we want HVB temperature. And we're going to have gauge indicator 2. And now let's see how our 12 volts doing. So let's go 12 volt battery voltage. Under text. And let's have a state of charge. And we'll have that one under line. And those are our eight sensors. Go ahead and take a look at that. Hit OK. And now let's make this look better and more understandable. So double tap HVB age. And we're going to click the box here. And we're going to rename this to HV age, high voltage battery age. And once we got that done, we can click back. So you can see my battery is now um, 4.24 months old. Now HVBSOH makes no sense to me, so let's go ahead and click that and change the title to be HV State 
of health. There we go. And I like this line since 100% is good. Let's go ahead and go to scale and pointer and change that red to a nice green. There we go. And let's say, let's go to visual warnings now. So we get below, when we get below 70%, we want it to stand out. So we'll go ahead and click the box here. Change value of the background color when the value is below, say 70%. And we want that to change the background color to red. Let's go with a dark red like that. So you want to see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and change this to 110. And you boom, you see it changes the red up here. So let's go on that back to 70. Hit back. There we go. Okay, good. And now we want to go to the our charger, which we can't ever charge below zero. So let's go ahead and change this. First of all, first of all, we'll go to properties. Change from horsepower to kilowatts. And now we want to go to scale and pointer. Minimum, make sure you're at zero. And maximum should be where your car can charge at. The Mustang Mach-E, maximum charge at 150. EV6, I think it's 300. So whatever your car's maximum charge rate is, change the maximum to that here. There we go. And now let's go to HVEV battery power. I want to rename the okay for again. Just go to um, special properties. Default value to HP. So make sure you're on kilowatts. And I want to use a custom title. We're just going to call this one HV battery power because we know it's an EV. Um, let's go make that down. Let's go to scale and pointer. And I want. So under 300, I'm going to go ahead and just do minimum, I'm going to do 150. You can do 300 or you can do 150. So my maximum charge is 150, so I'm just going to make 150. But we can use with 300. And now I want to show blue line, but I want to change this blue line to be a green line. Let's do that. Our blue line is going to start off at zero because this is our region or break in here. So let's go to regenerate break into minus 150. There we go. And now let's go show red line. This is the power we're using. So again, we're gonna start at zero. And we're gonna finish off at 150. And there we go. And that looks good. So let's go visual warnings. Make sure nothing's checked here. Cool. That well, looks good to me. So that's, let's go to um, out temperature. Double tap. I'm going to rename this to be outside temperature. And if you're not America, go ahead and go in here and change this to whatever you want Celsius, Fahrenheit, Kelvin. Again, it's under sensor properties down here at the bottom. I'll keep mine on Fahrenheit because I'm in America. And then let's go over to HVB temperature. And we're going to rename this to be HV temperature. And again, if you're in anywhere else in America, go ahead and go here and change the to uh, Celsius or Kelvin. I don't know why you use Kelvin, but you have that option. So now we have name renamed it. Let's go to scale and pointer. And I want my minimum to be zero. Oh, sorry. Scale and pointer. My maximum, since I'm using Fahrenheit, my maximum I want to be 120. If you're in Celsius, I would put a 50 here. Okay. Now let's go to 
up in Mexico, I'm going to show blue line. And I want to pick the color green again. Because we want, and we're going to be good from zero for the start to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius is a good temperature for you. Click show red line. You want to start off where you left off, so it needs to be 90, put 32 if you're in Celsius. And I'm going to put my maximum here to be 120, or put 50 Celsius if you're, or, you know, 50 degrees Celsius. That looks good to me. Let's back out of this. Cool. Now let's finish up here, 12 volt battery. Double check that. And do we want to go to visual warnings and we want threshold above and below. So we want threshold above when it's above 15 volts. We want it to go red. And when it's below 12 volts, actually, let's say 11.5. 11.5 volts it will go red as well okay that looks good okay so now let's go to our 12 volt battery state of charge double tap we're going to rename this one to be 12 volt state of charge focus on Go. And I want that red bar to be yellow. So let's go to scale and pointer. Click the right bottom one. Let's pick a nice yellow for that. Good. Now let's go back. I want to go to visual warnings. And I want to change value color when background is below threshold. So let's check that box. And we want to get less than 30% battery. I want this to turn red. Just like that. So we want to do a quick test. Let's go ahead and put this at 90. And boom, you can see it there, it turned red. So boom, let's go up, oh, nope, 30, not 60. And there you have it. We have our fully customizable page. Um, now I want to make this page one. So click the gear again and slowly type one by one, move left. You can't go too fast or it messes it up. Almost there. Oh, I'm too far. Okay, I guess you go. All right, so now we have um, our page, our custom page we have, for a nice quick glance of our state of our health of our car right there. Um, you definitely wouldn't you know, go through and make your other ones a little more clearer or use some of these as examples. Either way, let's go see how this looks when actually on a test drive. All right, now we're ready for our test drive. Let's see how this thing works in action. Yeah, a little bit of snow, so I'm not going to do anything too crazy. See our kilowatts going up to about 27, 28. We're just driving. Pick up speed. There we go.
So now we're done with our test drive. Let's see what it looks like when we charge our vehicle. So. And my charge point will give me about nine kilowatts. So I should see that. It's a car charge. There we go, nine. So we'll see if we have a good charge. And my charge point's working. So overall, like I said, for $14, I definitely recommend buying one of these OBD2 scanners because um, when you need one, you're really going to want one. And it, it's just nice to have. So with that, hope you all learned something today. I'll see you all next time. Later.